welcome back to this lecture series on pulse width modulation for power electronic converters. So, this is a lecture series of 40 lecture series and this is the uh, concluding lecture. So, we had uh, 13 different modules and the last module has been on uh, multi level inverters for pulse width modulation for multi level inverters and this is the third lecture in that module and this is the 40th lecture in the entire series. So, I welcome you to this uh, uh, concluding lecture of this uh, series of lectures now. So, it, it would be good to take an overview of uh, what we have been doing here. So, in the first set of modules we basically covered the different topologies where this is where we discussed the basic neutral point clamped inverter topology as well and we looked at different applications in a couple of two or three lectures. We looked at what were the applications and uh, we looked at things like motor models and how you can model the mains as seen by the inverter and so on. Okay, we looked at the fundamental and the harmonic equivalent circuits uh, etcetera. Then this module set of modules they normally they pertain to uh, the PWM generation. So, we looked at uh, Fourier series and waveform symmetries and so on and then uh, pulse width modulation at low switching frequency particularly how would you do selective harmonic elimination and we looked at such things here and the effect of the switching angles on the harmonic voltages the fundamental and harmonic voltages we tried to study and uh, we will be designing some low frequency PWM methods. Then we looked at triangle comparison based PWM and space vector based PWM where your uh, assumed switching frequency or the inverter switches at a frequency much higher than the maximum modulation frequency of the uh, inverter. So, this set is broadly on the PWM generation and then this is all on the analysis part and this is all about the two level inverter. So, there is here also we considered essentially the PWM generation for two level inverter, here also we have been looking at the analysis for the two level inverter. How do you calculate the RMS current ripple, how do you calculate the DC link current and then some ways of estimating the ripple torque that is there whether it is when you are running an induction motor from sinusoidal voltage there will be only a steady pulsating torque, but you are feeding it from an inverter there is not fundamental component alone you know there are also harmonic components and they result in harmonic fluxes and harmonic currents. The fundamental flux would interact with harmonic currents and the harmonic fluxes would interact with I mean the fundamental uh, current would interact with harmonic fluxes and produce pulsating torque and this we did some analysis on this also and then we went about evaluating the inverter loss. So, many of the first three particularly you know these are all actually more or less directly extendable to the three level inverter also. So, we here there are some effects of dead time and over modulation and now we have been into the last module on uh, multi level inverter. So, as I have uh, said in the previous lecture, so these are the contents that we had in the present module. So, we initially reviewed the neutral point clamped inverter topology and we looked at the pole voltages, line voltages and line to neutral voltages how they are related here and the essential difference here is that you know in a, in a two level inverter the pole voltage can be only plus V D C by 2 and minus V D C by 2 and here it can be plus V D C by 2, minus V D C by 2 or 0. So, this intermediate voltage level it leads to many more voltage levels like 5 different voltage levels for I mean values possible for line to line voltage and again more uh, possible instantaneous values for line to neutral voltage and this is what is responsible for the improved waveform quality. And you know voltage vectors they are produced by the we have about 27 inverter states So two level inverter like uh, once we understand two level inverter and the basic concepts dealing with three level inverter is not at all a problem. So, in two level inverter we had two raised to the power 3 8 inverter states here we have three raised to the power 3 uh, 27 inverter states for each inverter state it is possible for us to look at what the pole voltages are which we did. And then correspondingly we can find out what those line plane voltages are and correspondingly we can find out what those line to neutral voltages are. Once you have these line to neutral voltages you transform them into the stationary reference frame you know alpha beta and you get your voltage vectors and these would be the voltage vectors produced by three level inverter. What we found was in a case of two level inverter there are eight inverter states they produce six active vectors and the two zero states produce one uh, zero vector. So, eight states produce 7 distinct vectors, here we found 27 states producing 19 distinct vectors. So, there is a lot of redundancy, what do you mean by redundancy? There are more number of inverter states producing a particular vector state I mean voltage vector then you call it redundancy. Now, if you have a vector a particular vector let us say the vector is of length V D C and it is angle 60 degree 
uh, you know it is uniquely possible, it is only one unique uh, inverter state may be possible. Let us say another one you have 0.5 VDC angle 60 degree that is the vector. So, that vector symbolizes a three phase voltages or you know the line to line voltages. So, that vector it is possible to apply using two different inverter states. So, that is the redundancy. In the case of three level two level inverter we discussed this at length. What is the redundancy? The redundancy is in the zero state. The zero state you know the, or the zero vector can be produced using two different zero states. Here the same zero vector can be produced by three different st uh, uh, zero states and also there are six vectors of length 0.5 VDC. They can be each of them can be produced by two inverter states. So, the redundancies in a three level inverter are much higher than what you have in two level inverter. So, in two level inverter you can design so many PWM methods in three level inverter you can design much more than that. So, what we are trying to look at is just some idea you know how, how possibly you can do this you know some ideas that will get us going and uh, you know please bear in mind what I am talking is it is actually only the starting process I mean it is not a you know not a final thing these are all inputs enabling inputs for you so that you can do further and you know you can do more work on uh, pulse width modulation or you know work on PWM converters in various ways. So, we are, we are just trying to get some introduction some basic idea on how exactly you can do that now. So, remember we had so many lectures we discussed about uh, PWM for a two level inverter. So, if we extend that in, in three level inverter offers much more possibilities than that. So, you have you, you know you much more things are actually possible in a three level inverter. So, we are just trying to understand the fundamental concepts so that you know we will be able to deal with you know new analysis of some known PWM methods or probably come up with some new PWM method design or whatever. So, that is what we have been trying to do now. So, if everything you did like sine triangle PWM we did for single phase I mean for a two level inverter we try to extend it for three level inverter. In the case of two level inverter it is fairly simple because sine triangle PWM there is one sinusoidal modulating signal for a phase you are going to compare it with a triangular carrier. So, its output is going to be giving you the getting signal top and bottom devices are complementary. Whereas, if you go for three level inverter the same sine triangle PWM you may have one modulating signal, but you know your inverter leg your R phase leg is not having only one you know it has actually two sets of complementary devices. So, you need two getting signals. So, one of them we saw that you know is the same sign PWM I mean you, you can one possibility is you use a modulating signal single modulating signal and compare it with two level shifted carriers this is one possibility. As I mentioned to you the other possibility also exists that is you use two modulating signals corresponding to a particular phase R phase and compare it with a single triangular carrier also there is such a PWM method also I am not discussing uh, that PWM method here and that is covered in some of the references that I have already indicated to you all right. So, now this is one way of extending to two level shifted carriers. So, if they are level shifted carriers what do you mean by that? So, your modulating signal earlier in sine triangle PWM you know for two level inverter we considered the carrier to vary from minus 1 to plus 1. Now, what we do we have two carriers one would vary from 0 to plus 1 other one would vary between minus 1 and 0. So, these two level shifted carriers and again it is not necessary that they have to be in phase they could have some phase difference also. So, we looked at this in phase and the out of phase uh, issues now this comes because of you know such kind of thing is not there in two level inverter you, know, you use a single carrier only you have you use such ideas for example, when you go you know when you talk of parallel inverters when you have inverters connected in parallel to the grid or draining a motor sometimes what you do is you do the so called carrier interleaving that is you, you have two inverters you know they are connected in parallel to the grid uh, through let us say line inductors. Uh, then what you can do is you know one uh, will be compared with some carrier at some 5 kilohertz other one will also be compared with uh, I mean the modulating signals or will be compared with the carrier at the same 5 kilohertz, but these two carriers will have a small phase shift like 90 degrees or 180 degrees at the carrier frequency. This idea of uh, uh, that you know carrier interleaving is a very interesting idea that has been used extensively in parallel converters. Now, what we are trying to do is in the same leg only you know the same sinusoidal signal you can have level shifted carriers. There is no real advantage by doing this in many cases you can actually use out of phase, but as we just uh, discussed in the last lecture in phase level shifted carriers are better than many other possibilities. So, like they give you a low harmonic distortion. Uh, okay. Then we looked at the switch switching sequence. So, we want to see what inverter states are getting what do you mean by the switching sequence we are looking at the state in which the different inverter states are I mean uh, the, the states are applied when you use a particular PWM method now. This is actually the link between your 
triangle comparison based PWM and the space vector based PWM. So, there are two different approaches and you actually link them nicely by doing this now. So, you consider any carrier comparison PWM method. So, what you do is look at one carrier cycle or look at one sub cycle and see what is the switching sequence like. And so, that gives you an, a very good idea of how it is going to work now. So, you can compare it with uh, some space vector based PWM methods more easily and once you know that doing this analysis you know you know the voltage vectors that are getting applied it is a carrier comparison PWM, but you know what is this what are the voltage vectors getting applied and in what sequence they are getting applied. So, you can calculate the error voltage vector and you can integrate and you know you can do those analysis like the stator flux ripple analysis which we did earlier. So, we ended I mean in the last lecture we had some things on the switching sequences for the in phase and out of phase SPW this is what we looked at and the switching sequence for third harmonic injection is pretty similar to that and what we found out was in many of these cases the when you use in phase PWM particularly the three nearest voltage vectors are the ones that are often getting used. So, that is what comes up whereas, in the out of phase cases it is not the three nearest voltage vectors that is one significant finding there. Then like you know in the sin sinusoidal PWM you can add third harmonic you can also add some other common mode signals which would lead to bus clamping this is what we looked at towards the end of that in the last lecture and we would be looking more in terms of space vector based PWM three level inverter controlled as equal and two level inverter and so on so forth and more number of topics that we would look at uh, today. So, when you do this what what you essentially are doing is this three nearest vector what happens is what are the three vectors you know if you look at the sequence in which they get applied you normally start from one vector whose magnitude is 0.5 VDC and you come back to the same vector and that vector we call it as the pivot vector. This is equivalent to your 0 vector in a 2 level inverter case now. So, this pivot vector time is divided differently just like the 0 vector time is divided differently in a 3 level in, in, in a 2 level inverter this pivot vector time is divided differently by different PWM methods in a 3 level inverter. In conventional space vector PWM you divide this pivot vector time equally between the two now and if you really see that the you know the pivot vector time is all right you know you can apply either pivot state 1 or pivot state 2 you know there are two pivot states, but they have some influence on the DC voltage unbalance that is something we will take a look at now and you can look at so the effect of pivot state on the DC voltage and balance and we will also quickly see how you can work out you can evaluate the DC link current for a 3 level inverter as we try to evaluate it for a 2 level inverter. And we would look at bus clamping PWM from the space vector point of view now because you know when you use the pivot vector divide you are using two pivot states you here you will be using only one pivot state just as in 2 level inverter you used only one zero state instead of two here you will use only one pivot state now and we will do this advanced bus clamping PWM which we discussed for 2 level inverter. We will see how this can be extended to 3 level inverter and then we will go on to see the error. We will look at the error voltages in the various cases and then we will try to integrate you know you can I mean, once you understand that you can integrate and get the stator flux ripple and do an analysis very similar to what we did before and possibly you know we will just see how you can start coming up with hybrid PWM methods here also. All right. So, this is PWM for 3 level neutral plant uh, clamped inverter lecture 3. So, third lecture in this last lecture in this particular module. So, this is 3 phase volt uh, you know 2 level voltage source inverter each leg is a single pole double throw switch and they are relays like this these two switches they switch in a complementary fashion and uh, the switches can block voltage in one polarity the collector positive with respect to emitter and they can conduct in both the directions that the transistor can conduct in one and the diode can conduct in the opposite direction. The three level inverter in every leg instead of being a single pole double throw it is now a single pole triple throw switch the throws are connected to the positive bus negative bus and the DC neutral here also positive negative on the DC now is that fine all right. So, now you have one leg of a three level inverter which has been realized here. So, this is something we looked at in the first module and we also looked at I mean we briefly looked at this in the subsequent uh, to I mean the, the past two lectures in this module. So, this S1 and S2 and S3 and S4 when both are on R is connected to the positive when these two S3 and S4 are on R is connected to the negative when the middle two are on R is connected to the midpoint. So, you find that S1 and S3 are complementary and S2 and S4 are complementary we saw this in both the previous lectures now. So, the PWM requires that we generate the signals for S1 and S2 then S3 and S4 can be generated as complements of S1 and S2 respectively ok. So, this is two legs of a three level inverter and if you are using a single phase load for some reason or uh, you know let us say there is a single phase uh, uh, 
uh, source whose power you would want to tap and supply to some DC load, you could potentially do this. Now, this is the 3 phase 3 level inverter which we have been talking about. Now, remember all the space vector PWM all that are actually valid for 3 phase cases and not really for single phase. For single phase inverter also we discussed some PWM, we looked at some even harmonic injection also in, in one of our lectures uh, in the triangle comparison based uh, PWM in that module we discussed one. All the space vector PWM idea and all the third harmonic injection common mode injection are all ideas which are actually applicable to 3 phase. In fact, they are extendable to 5 phase, 7 phase etcetera also alright. So, this is the inverter that we are actually looking at. So, let me quickly indicate the important terminals we will have. So, these are R, Y and B terminals, these are the terminals of the load. You can probably assume that an induction motor R, Y, B is connected here and it has some midpoint neutral which is not connected anywhere ok alright. So, this is positive terminal, this is negative terminal and this is 0 and you have VDC by 2 and you have another VDC by 2 with this polarity. So, this is a 3 level inverter now, we had already seen this. So, VRO can take these values and this 0 is what you do not have in a 2 level case and these relationships are similar to what you have in a 2 level inverter. Now, again because your VRO is this additional 0 is there in VRY you have this additional value which is not possible in 2 level which is possible in 3 level. Again these things are what you do not have in 2 level, but you get in a 3 level inverter because of these additional voltage levels being available. So, the inverter output can follow the ideal out desired output more closely and can lead to improved waveform quality. So, this is what is our voltage vectors now in a of a you know basically it gives for a 2 level inverter. We can quickly fill this up to show how it is for a 3 level inverter just as an exercise plus minus minus. So, you have plus 0 0 it will be half of the length of the vector that produce you know um, uh, corresponding to plus minus minus. So, plus 0 0 and 0 minus minus produce the same set of 3 phase line plane voltages. So, their output is this is like this now. Then let me consider the set plus plus 0 and 0 0 minus. So, they will produce a vector half the magnitude like this and again here 0 plus 0 then minus 0 minus and once again I have here minus 0 0 0 So, I can I can look at uh, minus 0 0 and 0 plus plus and there is another one this is 0 0 plus minus minus 0 and I can do this here it is plus 0 plus 0 minus 0. So, if you know the voltage vectors corresponding to 2 level inverter extending it to 3 level inverter is quite easy. So, this is all that you have and 0 0 0 minus 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 plus 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 they produce the null vector. So, the only other vectors which are a speciality actually of 3 level inverter are here, these are the other vectors. So, I am repeating this a number of times for this is useful I know, this is plus 0 minus, this is 0 plus minus, here it is minus plus 0, here it is going to be minus 0 plus and here it is going to be 0 minus plus. So, this is how the vectors are which is fairly simple. So, if you have a 3 phase voltage source inverter you can do a sinusoidal modulation using 3 phase modulating signals as shown here and these would be the average voltages and this would be the average voltages when you have common mode added and uh, you know these are 3 phase average voltages uh, uh, you can uh, come up with the 3 phase average voltages on the load. V r and average V and average are the 3 phase average voltages applied on the load from that you can calculate your V alpha average and V beta average and uh, so all this is possible. So, as we found before sine triangle PWM for 2 level inverter you need one carrier here you would need two carriers. So, two level shifted carriers like this, this is what we do and of course, as I mentioned to you, you can use only one carrier that is what you can do is shift the R phase signal up by adding plus 1 to this. Again, whenever this signal goes negative uh, add plus 1 to this, again when this signal goes negative add plus 1 to this, then you can use only the top carrier for comparison. So, this is something that you use for uh, you know ease of implementation 
and the, the result would be the same. But anyway, we are considering the two level shifted carrier waveforms which are in phase like this for this particular lecture. As I mentioned to you already, so you can also have out of phase carriers and as we discussed in the last lecture, the inverter state sequence is different here. Here you use the three nearest vectors, here you use four different vectors and one of the vector is far away from the reference vector at least one of them. So, the instantaneous error voltage vector is high which is also shows that the harmonic distortion is high and uh, there is some detailed study that has been carried out and uh, in the references that I indicated to you, you can find more details on this now. So, what we would actually do is see this is what we will do for the implementation, we will we will shift that, but we will consider the carrier to be you know, two level shifted carriers compared with a sign or any other modulating signal here. So, when we looked at the switching sequences in the last lecture, what we found out was let us say if we are looking at the in phase triangle PWM, it starts from here. So, for some set of three phase references, it could start from plus 0, 0, it could go to plus 0 minus, plus minus minus, and come back to 0 minus minus, like here and back here. So, this is something these three vectors and it starts from here and comes back here. Let me just uh, indicate it in terms of arrows. So, it may go like this. Again in the opposite direction, so what happens is when the reference vector is sweeping through this region when the reference vector is sweeping through this region, you know you can talk either in terms of reference vector or three phase sinusoidal modulating signals. If you have modulating signals, you, you transform them into the space vector domain, it becomes a reference vector. You see this plus 0, 0, you see 0, 0 minus. Both of them lead to vectors of length VDC by 2 and the same vector. So, this vector you call that as the pivot vector because you know generally you know it starts from there it ends from here and you call those two states as the pivot states that is you call those states as pivot states. What are the pivot states plus 0 0 and 0 minus minus. Similarly, this is also a pivot state these are all pivot states that is a terminology that we generally use here now and pivot vector is like when you say it is 0.5 VDC angle 0 that is the pivot vector we are talking of that can be realized using two states and now you see this is the redundancy I was telling you. This is the kind of redundancy you had in a two level inverter, you had two different zero states, now you have two different pivot states. So, this gives you lots of possibilities now. So, in the case of sine triangle PWM what happens is you start from here and come back and go on there. With some common mode addition the time you spend at plus 0, 0 and 0, 0 minus change but the total thing does not change, it is just very similar to common mode addition in the case of two level inverter. Okay. So, you can add common mode to this, this is what we saw and if you have a common mode then these two times will change. So, that will happen you know you would still get the same uh, vector. Again if you are let us say you are, you are in a different uh, vector like you know, let me just indicate something else. Let us say different color maybe. Yeah. So, if your tip turns out here you will see that you know you will see for certain sets of three phase references you will see that these three are getting applied and you will find that your reference actually falls somewhere in between. So, the in phase sine triangle PWM and uh, you know where you use these in phase carriers level shifted carriers you may compare them with sinusoidal modulating signals or you can have sine plus common mode. In all these cases you generally find that the three nearest vectors get applied and therefore, they lead to good harmonic performance. Particularly even when you go to conventional space vector PWM, you make sure that these two get applied for equal durations of time and that makes the harmonic performance a little better than what is possible with usually with sine triangle PWM. On the other hand when I talk to you about the uh, you know um, this method you know the out of phase the out of phase would use these sequences which I am circling using blue and you can see that the error is pretty large. For example, when this is applied the error is pretty large here and therefore, it produces a higher amount of harmonic 
distortion. So as I mentioned to you, these are some good uh, you know papers. I mean, these are some useful references for you to understand this uh, subject. I mean, for this uh, in phase and out of phase sine triangle PWM, and also look at some um, other um, uh, 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 triangle comparison methods and try to analyze them. So as I mentioned, you know, you through three phase sinusoids, you can add third harmonic component, and you can add suitable common mode components such that the PWM the in the phases would be clamped to PW you know bus clamp uh, to one of the buses. So, you can have different continuous or discontinuous modulating signals as you have in uh, two level and in fact more possibilities are there. For example, here zero clamping is possible as I mentioned towards the end of the last lecture. That is in, in a two level inverter you can clamp a phase to the positive bus or to the negative bus. So, you will clamp it for to the positive bus in the positive of cycle for 60 degree and clamp it to the negative bus uh, phase to the negative bus during the negative half cycle for 60 degree. Now, you can actually clamp a phase to the 0 bus that is the DC bits midpoint for 60 degree in the positive half cycle again for another 60 degree in the negative half cycle. So, such interesting methods exist and that is what you would call as 0 clamping PWM for example, you can call them like that that is also there now. Then you have comparison of three phase modulating signals, but what we assume in all these cases we assume different continuous and discontinuous modulation signals, but we assume that we are using in phase triangular carrier only which essentially ensures that we are getting the three nearest vectors and the common mode makes sure that the pivot state times the division of pivot state times changes and if you go to bus clamping what happens only one pivot state is used the other pivot state is not used. So, that is what happens now. So, as I said with third harmonic injection the switching sequence will be pretty similar as to what we did with sine triangle PWM sequence will be the same the pivot state times would slightly change because of your uh, you know um, in common mode addition now. So, your R phase signal here for example, has come down. So, you, you know you have so your Y and B phases would have also come down by the same extent. So, you will find that a one particular pivot state is applied for longer than the other and the other one would get applied for shorter time. So, this addition of common mode changes the pivot state time. The total pivot vector time is not changed, but the division of pivot vector time between the two pivot states is changed now. Now, the same kind of 60 degree clamping we used you know, we looked at continual clamp and split clamp PWM methods for two level. Here also you can look at continual clamp PWM waveforms modulating waveforms where a phase is clamped continuously to the positive bus for 60 degree and continuously to the negative bus for 60 degree. And here it is you know between 60 to 120 degree in the middle of the positive of cycle here again it is in the middle of negative cycle it is not necessarily so. This can be anywhere from this can start anywhere from 30 to 90 and the clamping region can end anywhere between 90 to 150 and this can be symmetric like this can start anywhere from let us say 210 to 270 uh, and uh, yeah this can uh, go on all the way till uh, 330 270 to 330. So, that would be continual clamp PWM and 60 de degree cl bus clamp PWM is one specific example. So, you compare it with two level shifted high frequency carriers. So, you will see that the R phase is clamped here and again here also R phase is clamped. Similarly, you will have other regions where Y and B phases will be clamped now. Just one example I am giving there are many many possibilities every possibility that existed in two level also exists here and more number of possibilities exist in three level inverter now. So, when you do this I am sorry. So, what happens to the sequences you, you end up with the same set of sequence as I mentioned before like you can work that out. So, for this it may start with plus 0 0 go to plus 0 minus plus minus minus and go to plus sorry zero minus minus. So, for our question of convention let us call this as 0 let us call this 1 2 and this is 7 like we called it in a two level inverter. So, this is 0 this is 1 this is 2 this is 7. So, you have these vectors applied for durations T 0 T 1 T 2 and T 7. Now, if you if you consider the same sinusoidal references and add some common mode to that the V reference vector will not change because the common mode signals are added V reference vector does not change now. So, the V reference vector continues to be the same, but what you will find is when you compare the, this the time for which T 
this T7 may reduce at, 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 and T0 may increase or vice versa. So, that is what you, you will happen now. As an extreme case for bus clamping PWM, what will happen here is one of them might not be there. For example, you may have only plus 0, 0, plus 0, minus and plus minus minus and the same thing may have go in the opposite the reverse direction or it could be the other way 0 minus minus plus minus minus and plus 0 minus. This is what you will find in bus clamping PWM one of the pivot states is not used. You can find some similar observations when you use let us say here also like you have a different sets of three phase modulating signals the equivalent reference vector may fall here or you may have equivalent reference volume here. In all these cases this would be the pivot state and in this pivot state I mean pivot vector and you will see that only one pivot state would get applied if you are talking of uh, uh, bus clamping PWM and for the kind of bus clamping PWM I showed you this middle 60 degree R phase is positive and therefore this will not get applied R being you know R being positive is what will actually get applied it, it, I mean it will make sure that you know R phase is always positive only such inverter states would actually be applied now. So, you know everything that we studied there can be extended here also. So, in the case of two level inverter we considered the three phase load currents to be sinusoidal the harmonics were neglected here also there is harmonics are neglected there is still greater reason to neglect harmonics here because the three level inverter produces better waveform quality than that. Then like before the switching functions we have to multiply the load current with switching function but the difference now is the switching function of top device earlier there is only one top device and one bottom device in a two level inverter. Now, here you have S1, S2, S3 and S4 and by top device here I mean S1 what I mean here is S1. So, for R phase like it will be SR1, SY1, SBN. So, you have to multiply but so the switching function is common there and here you have to multiply it with the switching function but which switching function it is the switching function of the top device here. Again then the next thing what you do is you, you find the currents the top device currents the currents through the top devices as in the previous case the only difference is that it is top that is the difference. And if you add those three you would get your DC link current so all right. So, there is similarity except that you are going to multiply it by switching function and then the top device currents are going to be added. So, once you do that you will get the DC link current. So, in the DC link current as before we will have a DC component and it will also have a ripple component and this DC component will flow from the rectifier or the a DC supply and the ripple component you would expect most of the ripple component to flow through the DC capacitor some part can come from there also but many a times you can assume that the entire ripple component flows through the DC capacitor and you can go about evaluating the capacitor current the DC capacitor current. So, you know the same way like you know it is just a little more complex more involved than the two level inverter otherwise you can do it in the same fashion. So, you can once again come up with the RMS uh, capacitor current which will help you in sizing and once you have the RMS current you can also estimate the power loss uh, along with the knowledge of the equivalent series resistance and with power loss you can estimate the temperature rise and also possibly the life of capacitor. So, you can actually you know it is not about the DC link current, but the rest of the things you can actually you know for switching sequences for various carrier based PWM and all that you can actually look at this thesis as a reference now. So, let us look at the doing things from the space vector point of view that is something that we have to look at that is what we are doing is we looked at the three phase references meaning uh, being provided as three phase sinusoids or three phase sinusoids with common mode added. Instead what we will do is we will consider the, the reference as a re voltage reference being provided as a rotating reference vector. It is a revolving reference vector which revolves at the fundamental frequency omega and its amplitude is or its magnitude is proportional to the uh, fundamental voltage we want. And this we are sampling once in every sub cycle T s. This is similar to what you do in a two level inverter space vector based PWM for two level inverter. Then you identify the sector within which the sample falls again same as what you do in two level inverter. Now, the only difference is the set of voltage vectors to be applied should be identified. In the two level inverter it is normal you know it is the two, two active vectors one on the clockwise side of the reference vector the other on the anti clockwise vector. So, two active vectors and a zero vector here you can consider 
different sets of vectors actually speaking and you normally consider the three nearest vectors now. And finding this three nearest vector is some additional job that you really have to do and that takes certain amount of computational effort now. And once you do that for each of the three vectors for example, let us say we have you have identified the three nearest vectors for each of the vector you have to calculate the dwell time. And uh, what can actually happen is depending on where you are the formula may have to be used could be different and after that you go about outputting the voltage vectors in the desired sequence. So, let us say you are like this now you have identified you know, there is a rotating vector which has been sampled and you have identified that this falls in the so called sector 1. Now, in this sector 1 the tip falls in the so called triangle 1 let us call this as triangle 1. So, sorry this is this is triangle 1 formed by these three vectors now. So, these are the three nearest vectors now. So, you are going to do some calculation let us give some let us give some names here this is let us call it as v 1 vector let us call this v 2 vector as before. So, let us call this as v 7 vector. So, let us call this as v 13 let us call this as v 14 vector. Now, what you have to do is v 1 vector t 1 plus v 7 vector t 7 plus v 13 vector t 13 equals v reference vector t s. This is the old second balance equation this is a vector equation. So, it contains two equations then the other equation is t 1 plus t 7 plus t 13 equals t s. The idea of old second balance is still the same you need three vectors now you used three vectors now you what you see is actually the three vectors have to surround the tip of the reference vector that is important. You can actually use these three vectors also these were the three vectors you would have used as a two level inverter. Now, you have another set of three vectors and these are closer to this vector and therefore, the error vectors are closer and therefore, their integrals are going to be lower and therefore, you are going to have lesser amount of distortion in your current. So, that is the basic difference. Now, but you have to calculate this T 1, T 7 and T 13 by solving this you will get some set of formula in terms of V reference and alpha you will get you know T 1, T 7 and T 13 you will get some set of formula if you really sit and do this now. So, let, now let us say the reference vector was not here, but the reference vector is here. So, what now you will have to use these three vectors. So, let us say we call this V 1, V 7, this is V 2, this is V 13, this is V 14. Now, V reference vector multiplied by T s this is the desired old second that will be equal to V 13 vector T 13 plus V 7 vector t 7 plus v 14 vector t 14. Then you have t 13 plus t 7 plus t 14 is equal to t s. This is from solving this you get the old second balance this is old second balance then you can get expressions for t 13 t 7 and t 14 in terms of v ref and alpha. But you will see that these two expressions this set of formula that you get from here and the set of formula you get from here would be different this is one difficulty you have. Now, once again let us say you have here if your reference vector falls in this so called triangle 3 what you need to do now is this is V 7 this is V 2 and this is V 14 you would say V 7 T 7 plus V 2 T 2 plus V 14 T 14 equals V reference T s. The idea of old second balance is still the same, but the choice of vectors is different. So, you have T 7 plus T 2 plus T 14 is equal to T s. This will give you another set of formulae for calculating T 7, T 2 and T 14 and here this is pretty similar to what you have in a two level inverter except that this DC voltages here I mean the voltage vector length are V DC by 2. So, once again what you will get is uh, if you call this as uh, V 13 you call this as V 14 and you call this as V z you have V 13 vector T 13 plus V 14 vector T 14 plus V z vector T z is equal to V reference vector T s and T 13 plus T 14 plus T z will be equal to T s. Okay. So, these are all will be different and that is going to pose a difficulty and this if you if you write down the equations for T 13 T 14 and T z you will find them pretty similar to the two level inverter case except for V d c will now will be equal to V d c by 2 this is the difference that you will have now. But so, when it is in these four different triangles 
you have four different formulas. So, there is some difficulty. What is normally done is you reduce that to an equivalent two level inverter. So, these are the difficulties. Each sector divided into four triangles and each triangle is formed by the tips of three voltage vectors and you know you, you have to see which uh, vector where it falls and then calculate the dwell times for those three vectors and you have need different formulas. To solve the problem what you actually do is to deal with it as an equivalent uh, you know two level inverter. So, before that let us take a quick look at the pivot states which is really our you know uh, the there is plus 0, 0 and 0 minus minus both of them give your same vector which is 0.5 VDC angle 0. So, now if you look at there is current flowing to the DC neutral there is a current flowing into the DC neutral. So, how much is that current flowing into the DC neutral in this case I y plus I b which is equal to minus I r is the current flowing into the DC bus midpoint. When you are applying this state it is I r is the current that is flowing into the DC bus midpoint. So, what you see is you know as far as the load is concerned in the, the load voltage is concerned this state and this state do not make any difference at all they, they produce the same set of line line voltages. They, but as far as the inverter they make a difference this is something I have been mentioning in a two level case also there it would make a difference in terms of who is conducting so conduction loss and switching loss here also that same thing is valid one additional thing is that this current is flowing through the DC bus midpoint which is in a, in a two level inverter that connection does not exist at all whereas in a three level inverter that connection exists therefore there is current flows how much current flows in this case the current flowing is IY plus IB which is equal to minus IR here 0 minus minus R phase is connected to the DC bus midpoint therefore R is swing. So, you can see that opposite values of current I mean equal magnitude but opposite sign flows there. So, they actually have opposing effects on the DC voltage unbalance this DC current flowing through that what what will it cause if for example, let us say you have these DC you have this now through this midpoint some current flows there is some current flows let us call this as I neutral call this as I I n for I neutral and this is going to charge or discharge you know in some particular direction and this is going to lead to voltage unbalance that is this voltage V 1 and this voltage V 2 may not be equal this causes this problem and the problem is because load current is flowing and one way to do this is you can look at how they are unbalanced and you can see that these two have opposing effects on that one, one injects current I R one you know injects current minus I R. So, this choice of pivot state is also now you, you know that it, 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 this is the cause for voltage unbalance and this can also be a possible solution for voltage unbalance. You use one state more and the other state less you have this choice you can still produce the same reference vector. So, the choice of the pivot state can also be used to some extent to mitigate this voltage unbalances this is one of the points that I wanted to tell you. Now, coming back to what we are trying to do this is uh, I am showing a part of the picture. I am not showing all the six sectors, but I am showing only this region now. So, if you look at there are certain things you can always observe. Let us say the reference vector is only within this power, this is region somewhere within this. So, you will see that the R phase is predominantly positive, this is R 0, and you will see that the Y phase predominantly switches between minus and plus or whatever, you know, there are there, there is some limited thing. Okay. So, let us say here now let us look at this hexagon. let us look at. So, this pivot vector is very similar to 0 vector in many cases and therefore, you can look at this hexagon and, and this hexagon is quite similar to that of a two level inverters hexagon. So, what you can do is in every extent you can regard this as an equivalent two level inverter. Now, this is your pivot vector if you subtract the pivot vector you are going to get some vector let us call this as some V beta vector. So, this V beta vector is the equivalent reference vector for a conceptual two level inverter you can view this as a conceptual two level inverter. Let us come back to this in a different fashion now. So, here I am just trying to show that sector alone I am just trying to show that one alone. I am showing only that hexagon which I had shown in the previous picture I have removed these portions I am showing this now. 
So, I have subtracted and showing this V beta vector and this is at an angle beta. Now, if you look at this, it is very, very similar to a uh, two level inverter. This is plus 0, 0 and 0, 0, minus, minus are like your 0 states plus, plus, plus and minus, minus two different 0 states and there are active states here. The only difference is there are more number of states here and you will see that many of them may not be used. Plus 0 minus you make one switching you would go to 0 0 minus and from 0 0 minus you would go to 0 0 0 from 0 0 0 1 switching will lead you to 0 minus 0 and you go to plus minus 0 some of them you will not use. So, actually this is what you get which ones you will not use here this one is something you may not use. So, these are the ones that you really use here. Now, what is it that is really happening? If you look at R phase, the R phase is either plus or 0. You look at Y phase, Y phase is 0 or minus. You look at B phase, it is again 0 or minus. So, this is what you get in all these 6 cases. That is what you are trying to say is let me argue differently. R phase is there, right. There are 3 voltage levels plus VDC by 2, 0 and minus VDC by 2. Now, this part is the positive half cycle of R phase. This part is positive half cycle of R phase. So, your fundamental voltage R phase fundamental voltage is positive. So, there is no business for the R phase really to go to minus. It is usually going to switch between plus and 0 only. So, let us say R phase which is only between plus and 0. Now, let us take Y phase up to this angle this is the y phase 0 crossing actually y phase is negative here. When y phase fundamental voltage is negative you will want to switch the y phase only between 0 and minus y phase does not really have to switch to positive. So, in its negative half cycle it switches only between 0 and minus and again you take b phase b phase is negative peak is here and this is part of the b phase negative half cycle. So, B phase which is only between 0 and minus. So, what we are trying to say is let us say a particular phase which is only between plus and 0 in the positive half cycle and 0 and minus in the negative half cycle. So, based on this you can div div divide the entire fundamental cycle into 6 extents. So, in each extent you know you, you will find that you know for example, this is one extent. In this extent you will find that R is switching only between plus and 0, Y is switching between 0 and minus, Y is B is also switching between 0 and minus. So, you can call this high and low, high and low, high and low. So, you know you ignore plus and 0 for the time being. So, you see that this 3 level inverter is really like a 2 level inverter because the inverter is never getting connected to the third level within this region. So, what you do is in every region you start looking at the inverter as a 2 level inverter, but the high corresponding to R phase is plus and low corresponding to R phase is 0 here, but when you look at some other region here the high corresponding to R phase will be 0 and the low corresponding to R phase will be minus. So, this will change what is high what is low that will change. So, this is high and this is low this definition will change, but within one extent you can always look at that as a 2 level inverter. So, this is something that you can commonly use. So, you use, you use V beta now this V beta it is it is easy like a 2 level inverter this angle beta tells you in which sector it falls you can call this as the sector 1 2 3 4 5 6 like your older case and then you know these vectors and now your calculation is same you know you can calculate your null vector time in terms of v beta and beta it is going to be v beta by 0.5 vdc multiplied by sin beta by sin 16 to ts that is going to be this active vector time this active vector time is going to be sin 60 minus beta. So, I can write it down if you, you necessary you say you call the 0 1 2 and 7 T 1 will be V beta divided by 0.5 V D C instead of V D C it is now 0.5 V D C and sin of 60 minus beta instead of sin of 60 minus alpha divided by sin 60 into T s and T 2 will be V beta by 0.5 V D C sin beta by sin 60 into T s. So, this formula would be the same. So, you know your definitions are always like this. So, you would call this as 1 and you would call this 2 in this sector for example. So, you can actually calculate it like this. So, the calculations become much simpler now. So, there are many easier ways of implementing it has actually been discussed extensively in the literature. This 
one particular paper is one way of implementing the centered space vector PWM you know or the conventional space vector PWM which uh, you know involves the null vector time or the pivot vector time to be equally divided this is one uh, reference for that. This see thing of seeing 3 level inverter as unequal and 2 level inverter has also been discussed extensively in this particular thesis now. So, once you break it down to a 2 level inverter many of our other newer relatively newer ideas and ideas and switching sequences can actually be taken over to a 3 level inverter. Now, you have the conventional sequence what you do you start from 0 1 2 7. So, this is the equivalent reference vector V beta with angle beta for that. So, what you really do is you, you apply you know 1 and 2 for certain durations T 1 and T 2 and T z for the remaining durations so that you realize this. So, this you and you can apply this whatever is your T z you can apply T 0 and T 7 for equal durations of time as in conventional case. You start from 0 1 2 7 this is your conventional sequence where 0 is one pivot state and 1 is some other active state 2 is another active uh, 2 is another state and 7 is your back to your pivot state. So, you are starting from pivot state and ending here again you are going in the opposite direction. This is the conventional sequence extended to a 3 level inverter now. The same way the bus clamping sequence 0 1 2 can be extended now. So, let us call one of these pivot states is 0 this is 1 2 on the other pivot state is 7 you start from 0 you apply the uh, the same pivot state for the entire pivot vector time then this is T 1 and T 2 that is all. You apply this for T 2 seconds come back apply for T 1 seconds and come and stay here for T 0 seconds that is conventional sequence 0 1 2 you so you 0 1 2 2 1 0 you can go around like that. The same way you can do the other clamping sequence also that is you are up, you are now avoiding the pivot state 7 you start from 7 2 1 1 2 7. The same way you can go to the advanced bus clamping sequence also you avoid this pivot state 7. So, 0 1 2 1 you apply this 0 for the entire pivot vector time T z apply this for a T 1 by 2 seconds go here stay for T 2 seconds come back and stay here for T 1 by 2 seconds and you can do the reverse again 1 2 1 0. So, the same way 7 2 1 2 you can start from 7 you can apply you can avoid the pivot state 0 you can apply this for the entire T z go over apply here for T 2 second T 2 by 2 here you stay for T 1 seconds go back and stay for T 2 by 2 seconds again 2 1 2 7 is possible. So, all these ideas that you have for a 2 level inverter can be extended. So, this is 1 0 1 2 and this is also you have 2 7 2 1. So, all these bus clamping sequences can now be extended. So, given a 3 level inverter that reference vector you identify the nearest pivot vector and subtract it you get your reference vector corresponding to the conceptual 2 level inverter. So, it is a conceptual 2 level I mean you, you can view this as a 2 level inverter. So, for this you know you can calculate your vector times T 1, T 2 and T z and uh, like we did before we can use uh, you know either of the 2 pivot states. Uh, or you know we use only one and then we can also do this division of active state time we can apply one of the active states twice. So, this is advanced bus clamping PWM which has been extended for 2721 now. So, all this what will they do they will give you the same fundamental voltage, but the harmonics will change how to study that one simple way is to look at the error vector like we did in the two level case now. So, this is the error reference that you want this is the V beta that I was talking about actually. So, you can actually consider this as the V beta and this angle as your beta ok. So, now this error is the negative of that this now is when you when you have applied the pivot vector when you have applied the active vector 1 then this is the error voltage vector when you have applied active vector 2 this is the error voltage vector. Now, what you need to do is you have to integrate this error voltage vector and that will give you the stator flux ripple vector which is a measure of the current ripple. So, this is straight forward this is an extension of the analysis that you have really done for a 2 level inverter now. So, with this analysis it is possible for you to compare the different PWM methods I mean compare the different switching sequences. So, one thing which has actually been done is for example, such a study has been done and you have these things extended here. So, you have some So, the study has extended and it has shown that you have sequences for example, 0 1 2 1 is better here and 7 2 1 2 is better here and so on and so forth and here some 1 0 1 2 and this is 2 7 
to 1. So, this kind of an analysis has been done and you also have hybrid PWM methods which have actually been uh, developed. So, these many of these ideas are actually the novel switching sequences are discussed extensively in this paper. This is a very recent one on IEEE transactions on industrial electronics and this thesis talks about these uh, things in uh, good detail on uh, this advanced bus clamping PWM and how you would evolve hybrid PWM methods. So, this practically brings us to the most of the things that we really wanted to discuss here. So, So, if we look at what are the various things that we really looked at. So, it is about power electronic converters. Why do we need power electronic converters? That was our starting point. What is that is you may have your DC, you know you may have your load and you may have your uh, supply. The supply and the load they may not have the same requirement. For example, the load might be requiring AC whereas, your supply might be requiring a DC. So, in such a kind of a situation you require a power electronic converter now and many there are power the very most fundamental of the power electronic converters we look at are DC DC converters and we looked at primarily DC AC converters which are actually extensions from those DC DC converter now. So, you know we, we, we try to look at these topologies from DC DC converter. So, a DC DC converter if you look at a buck converter or a boost converter essentially it had a single pole double throw switch. We use the same single pole double throw switch and we realized uh, three phase inverters and you know we also looked at voltage source inverters and we looked at uh, current source inverters. So, we, we basically reviewed the topologies and the basic idea as far as the topologies are concerned are you know you are you, connecting switches in power electronics what you have other than R, L and C you have switches. This is something that I have mentioned in the previous lectures I feel it worthwhile to uh, you know read again. You connect it in such a fashion that you know you, you normally have single pole double throw, single pole multiple throw switches and the poles always have the current stiff elements in series and the voltages have the you know the throws have the voltage stiff elements across them. So, that is how you normally have. In a voltage source converter you have the voltage source available across the two throws. If it is a three level inverter you have three different throws and you have the voltage source available across that and the pole is usually a load terminal now. So, this is what you really do and you, you come to this now. So, once you have a power electronic converter you have a basic DC to AC converter it can be two level or it can be three level. One of your first things that what you want to do is you want to control the fundamental voltage you have your DC bus voltage from 600 volts with 600 volt DC bus it, it, it might be possible for you to realize uh, some AC voltage like uh, whose uh, peak line voltage is actually 600 volt. It, to that extent it is possible for you to do that. So, you want to control the fundamental voltage. So, that is one of the primary purposes why we did this particular course now. You have a voltage source inverter and we have voltage source inverters, we have current source inverters. This course we have focused on voltage source inverters and why? Because they are more popular now. You have these devices like IGBTs and MOSFETs and they come with anti parallel diodes and you know they can conduct in both the directions while they can block voltage in only one polarity. In the earlier era we had thyristors and thyristors are very rugged devices. Uh, you know they can block voltages in both directions, but conduct in one direction. So, they were actually suited more for current source inverters. So, current source inverter and thyristor they go better with one another now, but the more the thyristors take too long to commute it and there have been many issues about commutation you need additional commutation circuit and so on and so forth now. Whereas, you know to you know now the modern devices are easy to turn on and turn off like IGBT they can also handle 1000 or 2000 volts 1700 volts or so and handle hundreds of amperes. So, it is it is you know it is good. So, you have a good current capability and you have IGBTs and so therefore, you you know we have been looking at voltage source inverter and with this voltage source inverter we have been looking at how to control the fundamental voltage. What you have to bear in mind is there is no unique way of doing it there are multiple ways of doing it now. So, what we try to explore is explore some multiple ways how exactly you can go about doing and these multiple ways will give you the same fundamental voltage, but they will give you different harmonics and that would mean that your RMS current is different and that means your losses are different. That could mean your pulsating torque is different in when you are applying in a motor drive and the other important thing is these different PWM means uh, methods could mean your power conversion efficiency could also be different. So, this PWM has a very significant effect on the waveform quality and the power conversion efficiency. So, we have tried to look at the various aspects related to PWM and uh, we have analysis and we try to design a few PWM methods and so on and so forth. So, we focused on voltage source inverters for the reasons I told you we looked at two level 
level and 3 level inverters. We stopped beyond that because only 2 level and 3 level inverters are commonly used in the industry outside. So, you know I hope that you had uh, useful outputs here and I you know this is very closely related to the work that we do here at the Indian Institute of Science. I would acknowledge all the members of power electronics groups past and present at the Indian Institute of Science uh, who have contributed to this uh, work. And it was a pleasure teaching this course here and I mean I have been it is a pleasure giving these 40 lectures and I hope that you enjoyed these lectures and do let me have your feedback on these lectures uh, whenever you have a chance to. Thank you very much. <laughs>